Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of the Midweek Mentor. My name is Tiffany, and I'm so glad to be with you tonight. If you're watching live uh, or the premiere on Facebook, go ahead and drop a comment and let us know, or on YouTube, let us know that you're here watching with us. We love to interact and engage with you together uh, while we're online right now. Um, tonight's edition of the Midweek Mentor comes from Matthew chapter 12. So I'm gonna go ahead and read the scripture to you. Actually, hold on. This is what I've been thinking. I've been thinking this. We live, we are living in a time where we are socially connected, but relationally distant. I'm gonna say it again. We, we're living in a time, I feel like, where we're socially connected, but we're relationally distant. What do I mean by that? Pretty, once I state it, it's, it's pretty easy to see it, but think about it. We're online, we got whatever social media platform we have, um, and we're together, we're connected. We can see our, our thoughts, our comments, our ramblings, whatever's happening. We can see pictures and things that are happening in each other's lives. Uh, we can, you know, share some deep things sometimes, uh, kind of aware on the surface of what's going on in people's lives. And so we're, we're seeing things, but we're relationally distant, meaning we're seeing people online in a social platform, but face to face, we're not really seeing people. Um, and that was true before, but since this pandemic has hit, it's become even more so that way because of shelter in place uh, and the, the different things that are happening in our world, we're becoming more and more relationally distant and more socially connected. But what, I'm, what I've been thinking about with that is that being socially connected and relationally distant means that there, the relational accountability between people is at an all time low. Part of what's prompted this is I've, I'm not super active on social media. I have a Facebook account, but I, I never check it. It lives there. I don't, I don't even know why I haven't deactivated it. I, I don't know. I just, I'm not, it's never really caught on for me to, to do social media. Um, but occasionally when I've hopped on there, I, I just see so much, there's so much back and forth and I, and I've heard, um, you know, people comment about how they, they, you know, they put one comment online and there's so many negative reactions to it. And so it prompted like, what's going on here? And so uh, the idea that relational accountability is at an all time low because we can see, we can read what people are posting or we can see what people are sharing, but we're not actually in face to face relationship with someone. And so it becomes easier and easier to attack or disagree with someone because we're not seeing them face to face. And what's funny is that most of us by nature, probably a larger portion of the population is conflict avoidant, meaning we, we wouldn't want to enter into conflict. We don't wanna be in conflict with someone. And so when we have relational accountability with someone, we're a little less um, inclined um, to be, the way that we are online. Um, and so I've, I've just been kind of contemplating that. And then I, I you know, as I was thinking about it, um, I was reminded of, you know, scripture. So it's found in, in Matthew chapter 24. And it's when Jesus is talking to his disciples and what he's doing is Jesus for his disciples, for his followers, he, he kind of sketches out in Matthew 24, he sketches out the conditions of their, their present time then down to the very end of, of what the world was gonna look like, what the end of the age was gonna look like. And then he states their continuing task in the middle of that. Uh, and so this is what it says in Matthew 24, chapter, chapter 12, I'm so sorry, chapter 24, verse 12 and, and 13, and it says, sin will be rampant everywhere and the love of many will grow cold, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. What I was thinking about is the love of many will grow cold. And I've, I've read this scripture. Um, I remember being a, a younger person and reading the scripture and going, what does, what does that look like? The love of many growing cold. What will that look like? Um, and I think where we're living right now is a perfect example of part of what the love of many growing cold looks like. 
when Jesus is laying this out, he's, he's saying that there's going to be religious deception, there's going to be social and political upheaval, there's going to be natural calamities, and there's going to be disloyalty and persecution. And then I, I became curious about, because um, it says, sin will be rampant everywhere, the love of many will grow cold. In one translation, uh, it says that um, lawlessness will increase. And so I, the... It, the love of many growing cold has to do with there being a condition of being without law. And so what that means being without law, that's either people are without law because they are ignorant of, of the law or because they are violating the law. Uh, another, another way that that could live is that there, there's contempt and violation of the law. There's iniquity or sin continuing sin and wickedness. And as, as I'm, we're not the only generation to experience the love of many growing cold. We're not the only country to experience the love of many growing cold. You know, if you look back just in, in recent history, South Africa has experienced the love of many growing cold. Cuba has experienced that. Colombia, Russia, Germany. There are so many countries, if you look at their history, and you, and you pull back the curtain, you can see that the love of many grew cold. There was people being ignorant of law. There's people violating law, people standing and opposing the law. And I think, I, I know I'm getting real touchy here, but come on, let's think about it. Face masks are required to walk outside. In, in California, they, they're required um, because, you know, too many people were being seen without one. And so I know, I know that either there's people who are ignorant of that because they just don't have the, the news, or there's people who are standing and, and violating that because they don't want to. That's not, hashtag, that's not my new normal. And so what that looks like is rebellion. Rebellion is standing against the law of the land. And then, so in rebellion, love grows cold because we pick up a rebellious spirit. We pick up a rebellious heart. And if we open that door, then it's not just open for me to be rebellious against the law, but now I, there is permission and there's room for me to be rebellious against anyone or anything that I don't want to agree with. And so the love of many will grow cold. And then he, he so the, the follow-up to that is, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. And so this is, this is kind of, when you stop and think about it, the love of many growing cold isn't going to go away. It's only going to increase. There's going to be more rebellion. There's going to be more wickedness. There's going to be more ignorance. There's going to be more violation of, of things that are supposed to be keeping us together. But it's enduring in the middle of that the person who endures through the middle of that is going to be saved. And so enduring the middle of that, what that means is to bear up against adversity. That means to hold out under stress or under pressure, to, to, to hold your ground, to stand your ground, to, to be faithful, to stand in love. And I mean, in love based on the gospel uh, and submitting ourselves to that, submitting ourselves to Jesus in the middle of that because that was his call. This is going to happen. Now you stand, you stand here against it. So kind of, this is, this is short and it's kind of just some, you know, some big ideas. Relational accountability is at an all time low because we're socially connected, but we're relationally distant. And I know in California, at least with what's happening um, and the political state and all the things, oh, all the things that are happening, um, there's a rebellious spirit at work, even among believers, to rebel and to talk poorly and to talk negatively and to speak death over uh, things that we don't agree with or people that we don't agree with. And so my challenge to you is find someone on your social media network and call them, give them a phone call. Don't reach out to them on social media. And I'm saying even go farther than a text message because there is something different that happens when we hear the sound of someone's voice. We begin to feel love. We experience emotion. We experience a connection at the sound of, of someone else's voice. And so I'm not saying go knock on someone's door, I respect people's boundaries, but try and, and connect over the phone and say, hi, how you doing? I see your stuff on social media all the time, but I haven't heard your voice in a long time. And so I just wanted to call and say hi. And I know that may be awkward, but 
if we're if we're going to endure through the, the places that we're living in, I'm challenging us to become relationally accountable to the people in our circles by connecting and hearing people's voices uh, and, and doing what we can to stay relationally accountable in this season. So let me pray for you, Father. I thank you that you have not left us. Lord, I thank you that Jesus spoke these words millennia ago to, to, to his disciples then telling him, telling them, and then thereby the world who, who, who has read your gospel, uh, Lord, that there is a way to endure through the, the love of many growing cold. Lord, and that you call us to a place of repentance when we recognize that we're being rebellious or we've picked up a rebellious spirit. Uh, Lord, that you give us the opportunity to repent of that and to come back into to the fullness of what it is that you want to do in us and through us. And so I ask Lord, I submit myself to you and I repent for any kind of attitude or rebellious spirit that I've had against the things that are going on. And I say, Father, that I want to be a person who shines your light and your love. And I want to endure to the end with my love not growing cold, but me expressing love and standing in the middle of adversity. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you guys. Great to be online with you tonight. <music>